Project cars. They're not just limited to people with plenty of money. Although having deep pockets is ideal, it is possible to modify and repair a car on a budget with the correct planning and the will to learn new skills. A 90s four cylinder can be the perfect platform to start with, assuming that parts and how to videos are available for that model you're trying to work on. In my case, I chose the Honda Civic. These cars have been the go-to budget platform for as long as I remember. Honda parts are cheap and abundant, plus Civics sold very well, which means there are plenty of parts and cars still floating around. So let me introduce my 1993 Honda Civic EG, which I picked up in 2020 via a straight swap with my Yamaha MT-07 motorcycle. On the surface, this may seem like a terrible deal considering this Civic is not even VTEC, but there is more to the story. The swap was with my brother, so I already understood the car's full history. This car has also been in the family for roughly 18 years, so it holds some sentimental value. Plenty of humble memories, like my first front wheel drive burnout, my first time ever going sideways by accident, and my first car meet before I purchased my own car to drive around. So considering the history, I plan to keep it in the family. The Civic is completely stock, except for the rims, therefore I've got plenty of options when it comes to modifications. Most people will start with power mods, but honestly with this engine, bolt-ons won't get me very far, so I want to start with a simple brake upgrade. On Facebook Marketplace, I purchased a pair of rear trailing arms for $500 out of a Honda Integra DC2 that has a disc rotor setup. The guy also threw in some no brand rear lower control arms and bracing, but I don't know how I feel about installing no brand parts. I'll decide that later because now it's time to start removing the old parts and get ready for the new ones. EG and EK Honda Civics are still affordable and make for great project cars. Although the cheaper versions don't come with higher performing VTEC engines, you can still complete heaps of simple DIY mods on a budget as the chassis between trims are pretty much the same. Later down the road, force induction or engine swap kits are still being supported and is possible to do yourself. Now with a blank canvas, I'm ready to install the new trailing arms, but before I do, I'm going to replace all the old rubber bushings costing me around $200. Originally I thought I could do that without a press but that was not the case. Nowadays you can find low budget machinery which is perfect for small jobs like this. For $150 you get an upside down bottle jack fitted to a metal frame and with a bit of creativity it works quite well. If you're a proficient welder you can probably create one yourself. Because the brake lines had to come off anyway I decided to future proof and purchase braided lines locally for $150. I'll install these after the trailing arms go on. It makes sense to clean parts while they're off the car so finally I can remove two decades worth of grime that no one ever got to. Now what to do with these no brand parts. The bracing just won't work as the bolts are all different sizes. The seller told me that they were on his EG Civic but I have no idea how he came to that conclusion. The bracing is not going on but I am curious about these control arms. I wanna see if they make any difference so I'm gonna try them out and hope they don't snap. Each trailing arm isn't too hard to get in place with a hydraulic jack and some patience, but having a second pair of hands would make life much easier. If you have an old Civic with rear drum brakes, this might be an easy swap that you can do also. These parts are often found floating around on marketplace or even at car junkyards, but I can't say that will be the case for much longer. With all bolts torqued correctly, referring to a manual that I found online, I can finally get discs and pads on. The old discs and pads were rubbish, so I purchased a new set all around which should provide a noticeable difference. I purchased slotted discs for the front and economy discs for the back just to keep it budget. 
but I purchased premium ceramic brake pads all around which costed a total of $600 for the upgrade. Yes, I could have gone slotted brakes all around, but I'm running less than 70 horsepower, so I really didn't want to overcomplicate it and increase the amount I need to spend. With discs and calipers on, it is time to install those braided lines that I purchased. With the rear now out of the way and the handbrake reconnected, I can move on to the front brakes. If I'm following my own advice, I probably should change the front bushings. However, the rubbers on the front seemed okay, so I'll leave them be. Making quick work of the front, the last step is to bleed the braking system with some Performance.4 fluid that I already have. To make my life easier, I went out and purchased a brake fluid bleeding tool. This claims to plug into my air compressor and create a vacuum. But I tried, and I tried, and in the end, I tried too much. It just, it just doesn't want to go. The tubes came in handy, but overall it was the worst $60 I've ever spent so far on tools. Making sure to bleed from the furthest caliper from the reservoir to the closest, it is time to put the wheels on. Although the people on Honda forums said I had to upgrade the brake booster using one found in another model Honda, I decided to skip over this step just to see how I go. With the wheels on, I took a short break, which resulted in me booking a track event in one month's time. As excited as I am for my first track day, I've actually got a shit ton of work to still do on the Civic. So with that in mind, I tested the brakes in my driveway and it all looks fine. So just to be sure, I tested them super early the next day on the road. The brakes work fine, but my tires have absolutely no grip. So into the tire shop, the Civic goes the next week. In the end, I settled on Hankook Ventus RS4s costing a total of $800 for the set of four because I wanted plenty of grip for the track day. After this step, the Civic would sit untouched for quite some time. A lot of time has passed and I'm three days from the track day. You'd think I'm ready to go, but this Civic hasn't had a service in over two years. Plus, weight reduction would also be a nice thing to have. I went to my local parts store and purchased an air filter, gearbox oil, set of spark plugs, fuel filter, engine oil, and oil filter costing around $200. This engine might be boring, but I feel like it's going to be in this chassis for quite a while, so I, I wanna make sure I'm looking after it. Whilst under the car, I found a buildup of oil on the sump. Now, it looks like a slow leak pulling around one of the sump bolts, so I don't think it's gonna be a huge concern. I'll just wipe it and keep going. It is now past midday and I'm yet to drop the gearbox oil and replace the fuel filter, but I really wanna get weight reduction done and it seems like more of a fun thing to do instead. Removing interior is actually very easy, but just remember to organize your fasteners and you won't be cursing in future when you need to reassemble everything. With the rear interior all gone, I now have a huge problem. Where I live, you can't just remove your seats and seat belts, so I need to get my windows tinted. So the very next day, I pay a guy to tint my windows for $500 whilst I complete some final touches such as this fire extinguisher and the mount that comes with it, which I purchased for $100. Normally, it is mandatory to install a tow hook or strap, but it wasn't required for this day, so for now, I'm done.
This is my very first track day and I was pleasantly surprised how friendly everyone was. Some Australian YouTubers also made an appearance including Zach Baldy and Mike Lake. These guys are pretty easy going. Although my Civic felt extremely underpowered for this type of track, I did make the most of it and it's actually motivated me to do more once I get back. Well, that spark to do more didn't last too long, but I've got some unfinished business with this Civic before I can move on. In the last track day, I didn't require a toe strap, but for every other track that I'd like to do, I need to install one. It turns out that the fuel filter is pretty new, so I'll just replace the gearbox oil while I'm here. To help me top up fluid, I went out and purchased this massive oil syringe for $60, which unlike the brake bleeder tool, is the best $60 I've ever spent on tools. This $40 toe strap is the real deal, and not just some Alibaba crap. So with a quick visit to the bolt shop, I've got myself an easy installation. Now installing a toe strap to a road car is a bit cringe, so I made sure I can hide it in the bumper, but still allowing me to access it when I need some tugging. Now with that all done, I have bigger problems. That interior I took out has been sitting around for months and it stinks. My garage smells like an old person's home and I don't like it at all. So I'm going to clean the shit out of it. To do this once and never again, the plan is to pull out as much of the remainder interior from the car and commence a deep clean. Everything smells stale and musky, so I hope that's not for long. The process is simple. I'll use a brush to disturb the grime, I'll vacuum what I can, then I'll use a brush and soapy water to disturb it again, before lastly drying it with a rag. For trim pieces, the only difference is a high pressure hose, then applying some very generous coat of Meguiar's Ultimate Protection Dash and Trim Restorer, which costs like $30. And lastly, for parts such as carpets, either high pressure hose or extraction vacuum or both. Cleaning the carpet wasn't very effective, so applying four coats of RIT carpet dye that I got for $30, and I got myself some new carpet when it dried. Now the whole idea was to keep to a budget, but I got really carried away and I purchased a new touchscreen head unit plus speakers for $1,000, because I just couldn't stand how trash the original system was. Originally I thought installing a new sound system into this Civic would be a simple task, but that was actually far from the truth. The EG Civic has a plug and play system to power each door, which is not what you want when feeding new wires into doors, so I had no choice but to drill some questionable holes into these plugs to make it work. After that, I thought I was in the clear, but not really. The speakers I purchased were too big, and the spaces that came with the speakers didn't fit either. The only way forward was to buy some MDF for $10 and create my own spaces. I wish I had a better way to fill this gap, but for now, it will do. The most satisfying part is putting everything together. The final touch are these floor mats I purchased for $120 online, which seems a bit like a ripoff to me. The Civic now looks and smells so much better, but something is still bothering me. It's this stupid fart cannon and it's coming off and the stock exhaust is going back on. Whilst removing this cannon, I noticed a huge hole in my exhaust, which is probably why it sounds like an unhappy lawnmower. It's quite cheap and easy to patch this hole with $10 worth of material and it only needs to last until I learn how to weld. So I've spent up to $4,560, which includes the tools that I'll be able to use for many years to come. I could have chosen a cheaper sound system, tires, and even braking parts, but I was happy to spend the extra on quality. There is plenty more I can continue to go on with, but I'll need to hold off for a while because I have two new project cars incoming, which will take up the space. So stay tuned for future videos to find out what these projects are. And make sure you follow my channel so you can keep up to date with all my new videos. Thanks.